I'm going to show you real quick how we can set up a load balancer in Azure, set up a couple of quick VMs with a web server on each one, and how we can get those load balancing. If you enjoy this, I hope you'll check out the link in the description. I can show you how you can get full certification courses that I offer, and I think you'll find that getting certified in Azure is a lot easier than you think. All right, let's get into it. So here we are on portal.azure.com. Uh, we click the menu button, go down here to Virtual Machines. I'm going to click to Create Azure Virtual Machine. All right. I'm going to create a resource group. I'm just going to call this Demo RG. Click OK. I'm going to call this VM1. East US. Not going to do any kind of redundancy. Windows Server 2022 Data Center and the 2V CPU uh, 4 gigs of RAM is fine. Admin is going to be ELP Admin, Exam Lab Practice Admin, and then my password. Okay, for the disk, I'm just going to go with a standard hard disk drive. Nothing special there. For network, it's going to want to create a virtual network. So I'm going to just create me a network. I'm going to call this um, VNet1. Or actually, we'll, just, we'll call it VNet A. Okay. Default subnet there 10.0.0.0. Actually, you know what? Why don't we do this? Let's change that to 10.1. There we go. And then the subnet, we'll just call it subnet 1A, and it'll be 10.1.00 slash 24. Click OK. All right, everything else there is good, I believe. Click Review and Create. Okay, we'll click to create. All right, I'm going to pause the recording, give that just a moment to get created. Okay, now that that virtual machine is done, I'm going to create another virtual machine. So just going through the same process. Stored in demo RG. I'm just going to call this VM2 East US. Not going to do any redundancy. Basically the same setup. The only thing different is I am not going to create another virtual network. I'm just going to use the same virtual network. Okay, so VNet A, it'll be on the 10.1.0.0 network. Everything else should be the same. Although I am going to do an auto shutdown. I forgot to do that on the other one, but that's okay. I can always go back and fix that. I'm going to have it auto shut down at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, monitoring. Don't really need the boot diagnostics either. So let's just go and click Next, Review, and Create. Create. Okay, so while that is creating, I'm going to go back to Demo RG. Click on VM1. Okay, all that's fine. Interesting new little preview mode here. Let's go to auto shutdown and I'm going to set this to auto shutdown at 7 p.m since I forgot to do that. Okay, that'll be Eastern Time. Click Save. All right, and now I'm just going to wait on the second VM to get created. All right, now that that is done, we've got our virtual machines created. Okay, take a look at the networking blade of each one. We can see that our private address for... Um, VM1 is 10.1.0.4, 10 
and if we jump over to the second virtual machine, let's jump over to VM2, which was just created, go to the networking blade, and we can see that it is 10105. Okay. Now what we're going to do is click the menu button, go to all services. All right, and we're going to search for load balancing. Okay, there's load balancers right there. I'm going to click to create a load balancer. I'm going to just put it in the demo RG resource group. All right, and I'm going to call this ELP load balancer for exam lab practice load balancer. East US standard is fine. Um, and it's it's asking if I want to make this public, so I can make this a um, a public um, load balancer if I want. It's regional. If I am going to be going across different regions, I would need to go. I could go global, but I'm going to click front end IP address. So what are my front end IP address? What is my front end IP address going to be? All right, I'll call this front end um, address. It's fine and I'm gonna create a new I'm gonna call it front end pip for public IP address don't need redundancy don't need gateway any of that so that's fine that's gonna be our front end we're gonna click uh, next we have our back end add back end pool so I'm gonna call this back end pool okay vnet a add IP configurations for those two virtual machines, VM1 and 2. Okay, so we'll click Save on that. So we got inbound rules. All right, so this is going to distribute traffic inbound. So I could have a front end, we'll say inbound, front end, there's our front end address. The back end will go to the back end pool. It's over TCP, maybe port 80, we'll say. That's fine. Health probes, create a health probe. This is going to just test to make sure things are up and running. I'll give it a name. HTTP probe is what I'll call it. Click OK. Leave the rest alone here. Click Add. Okay, I don't need anything for outbound rules, so I'm just going to click Review and Create. Wait for the validation and click to create. All right. At that point, I just got to wait on my load balancer to finish getting created. Okay, now that the load balancer is deployed, I'm going to click the menu button and go down here to uh, virtual machines. And I'm just going to open up both of these in an RDP session so that I can do some configuration to them real quick. So. Go here to VM1 and download the RDP file, and then open up the RDP file. I'm going to do that for both of these. I actually already have just to kind of save time. So here's VM1. I've connected into it, and I'm going to go into Control Panel. So all i got to do is just do a search for the word Control, and I can go into Control Panel. I'm going to switch this to Large Icons, and I'm just going to turn the Windows Defender Firewall off. Okay. So we will go here to turn firewall on or off. And I'm going to go up here to manage, add roles and features. Next, next, next. And we're going to install IIS web services. So we'll go ahead and do that. Click install. And I'm going to jump over to VM2. As you can see, VM2. And do the same thing. So open up control panel. Switch to large icons. Turn Windows Defender off, firewall off, and it's just to kind of save time. Um, we could add a rule manually if we wanted to, but um, if we were using Azure Firewall and all that, we wouldn't really need that in this case. And granted, if you wanted that extra protection, you could have it if you wanted to in the real world, but to save time, I'm gonna not going to do that. So now I'm going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. We're going to click Next, Next, and Next, and we're going to install Web Server. Okay, click Next, 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 and Install. Okay, and we'll let that get installed. And as you can see, this first one right here is in the process of getting installed right now. So I just got to wait on that to uh, get installed. The INET Pub folder is already created. 
It's actually already created the IS start. I'm going to open up uh, MS Paint. As I like to do, I like to just edit that default web page to clarify which virtual machine we're currently connected to. So we'll go here, www.root, open that up. I'm going to put this is VM1. Okay, we'll just save that file. Close out of that. Okay, it's still in the process of uh, installing. We'll jump over to VM2 now and do the same thing. Open up MS Paint. Okay, file open. Go to the C drive. Okay, we're still waiting on the folder to get created over here, so it hadn't. It's not moving quite as fast. Let's see. Yeah. So we're still waiting on it to get created. So I'll just minimize that for a moment. Okay. Looks like it's made a little bit of headway. So let's see if it's done yet. C drive, yeah. INET pubs folders created. WW root. IS start. We'll say this is VM2. File save, create our little image. All right, and I'm just going to pause the recording and let all that get done. Okay, now that both uh, the IIS installations are complete, let's jump back into Azure and we're going to go to our uh, NSGs. Okay, so if we look at VM1 and we go here to networking and uh, take a look, we've got inbound rules. We don't have a uh, we don't have an inbound rule for port 80, so we need to click add. Okay, and we're just going to change this to port 80. Allow. Let's see, source any. Yep, destination any. 310, we're going to say allow HTTP. All right, we're going to click add. So we're adding that rule to our network security group for VM1. We're going to jump over to VM2, click networking, and do the same thing. Okay. Port 80, allow HTTP. All right, we'll let that get created. All right, now that that's done, we should be able to test uh, and make sure our load balancer is working. Um, we just need to know what the load balancer's IP address is, right? So we'll click the menu button, go to resource groups, go to demo RG, and we'll look at our front end PIP. That's our front end public IP address for our load balancer. It's that address right there. Okay, so we're just gonna go up here to the URL, HTTP colon slash slash, paste that in. And there you go, I'm connected to VM1. I should actually be able to open up like in private mode and maybe even trigger it to show the second one if it's load balancing properly. Yeah, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, that's gonna do it. We've, uh, we've got this thing working and um, those are the steps I wanted to perform to get all of this up and working. We have our two web, uh, two web servers running and our load balancer is running. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <music>